The World Health Organization says naming COVID variants after countries is stigmatizing and discriminatory. The founder of a major Black Lives Matter organization has seen the light. Plus, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis signs a bill to protect women's sports. All that and more. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. And God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week. If you're new to the show, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to start with the World Health Organization, because just like so many aspects of society, of media, of education, of entertainment, we see the infiltration of this woke snowflake philosophy. The left is so motivated, they say, to not offend anyone that one, they end up offending almost everyone, and two, they throw common sense out the window. That's what's going on with the World Health Organization, who says they are now going to change the way the COVID variants are named. They're not going to name them after countries anymore, even though that's helpful for us to identify them. Nope, they're not going to do that. They're going to name them with letters from the Greek alphabet. And why? Because those countries might get their feelings hurt. And here's the story. COVID-19 variants are to be known by letters of the Greek alphabet to avoid stigmatizing nations where they were first detected, the World Health Organization announced Monday. The new system applies to variants of concern, the most troubling of which four are in circulation, and the second level variants of interest being tracked. They will not replace existing scientific names, but are aimed to help in public discussion, said Maria Van Kerkhoff, the WHO's COVID-19 technical lead. I wonder, how does changing the names help with public discussion? How does it help at all? I mean, after all, we've had West Nile, Ebola, German measles, Spanish flu, on and on and on. It's been helpful to have the country of origin as part of the name. Now that's gone. We've got these generic labels. And here's more. Under the new system, the variants of concern take on the following names. The hitherto so-called British variant, B.1.1.7, becomes Alpha. The B.1.351, first discovered in South Africa, becomes Beta, while the Brazilian P.1 becomes Gamma. The so-called Indian variant, B.1.617, is split into sublineages, of which the B.1.617.2 variant of concern becomes Delta. The B.1.617.1 variant of interest is called Kappa. Wow, that's not confusing at all. Rather than descriptive names, names that will actually help you identify where they came from and remember them, the WHO is changing it to these names that will just get lost in the shuffle and forgotten. But why? Here's the answer. The lineage names such as B.1.1.7.2 will still continue to be used in scientific circles for the mutation information that their name conveys. While they have their advantages, these scientific names can be difficult to say and recall and are prone to misreporting, the WHO said in a statement. As a result, people often resort to calling variants by the places where they are detected, which is stigmatizing and discriminatory. To avoid this and to simplify public communications, WHO encourages national authorities, media outlets, and others to adopt these new labels. Yep, country names are stigmatizing and discriminatory. But I've got a couple questions before we go on to the next segment. One, Does the left care at all what the Greeks think about this? I mean, the Greek alphabet is getting thrown at everything like hurricanes and COVID variant names, all this bad stuff. Isn't that stigmatizing and discriminatory to the Greeks? The left care about that at all? And the other one is this naming convention. It is confusing and everyone knows it. The World Meteorological Organization, you know, the ones that name hurricanes, after a set number of names, they would go to the Greek alphabet. They stopped. They just announced recently that they're going to stop doing that because it's confusing and distracting. So while they drop it, the World Health Organization is adopting it. Think about that one. All right. So next, we're going to talk about a BLM founder who has seen the light. But first, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on, That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Okay, let's talk about Rashad Turner. 
who was the founder of Black Lives Matter in St. Paul, Minnesota. He has left the organization. He has seen the light because he learned what all of us know is that Black Lives Matter does not care about black lives. They care about advancing an agenda, destabilization, and advancing Marxist ideals. Here's some background on Turner. When I was two years old, my father was shot and killed. My mother wasn't able to take care of me, so I was raised by my grandparents. They told me that if I was going to change my life for the better, education was the answer. So I worked hard in school. I got into Hamlin University and earned a college degree, first in my family. Then I went on to earn a master's in education from St. Mary's University of Minnesota. I am living proof that no matter your start in life, quality education is a pathway to success. Quality education is the pathway to success. That's a great philosophy right there. This guy worked his way up with no father around at all since he was two years old. My father died when I was 15, but I can't imagine never having known him. Then Turner got active. I want the same success for our children in our communities. That's why in 2015, I was a founder of Black Lives Matter in St. Paul. I believe the organization stood for exactly what the name implies. Black lives do matter. So keep in mind, we're not talking about just some member of an organization. We are talking about the founder of BLM in St. Paul, Minnesota, the leader of the organization. But he has seen the light. He has seen what BLM is all about. And now he's speaking out. After a year on the inside, I learned they had little concern for rebuilding black families. And they cared even less about improving the quality of education for students in Minneapolis. That was made clear when they publicly denounced charter schools alongside the teachers union. I was an insider in Black Lives Matter and I learned the ugly truth. The moratorium on charter schools does not support rebuilding the black family, but it does create barriers to a better education for black children. Well, Turner nailed it right there. And here's the thing, friends, the BLM policies do not support black children. They are against the nuclear family. They are against charter schools. They were founded by Marxists. They recently put out a statement against Israel. Any kind of thing that the left is in, the radical left, BLM is in, because that's all they care about. Rashad Turner, luckily he has seen the light and he's actually trying to make a difference. Good for him, and I hope others will follow as well. So next, let's talk about Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, because he is at it again. He recently put his signature on a bill that would reserve women's and girls' sports for women and girls. And here's the story. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis on Tuesday signed legislation barring transgender athletes from competing in girls' and women's sports, joining seven other states in what he described as an effort to protect female sports. Mr. DeSantis, a Republican, gave the Fairness in Women's Sports Act his signature flanked by teenage athletes at Trinity Christian Academy in Jacksonville. I can tell you that in Florida, girls are going to play girls' sports and boys are going to play boys' sports, Mr. DeSantis said at the event. Imagine that. Boys are going to play boys' sports and girls are going to play girls' sports. This just makes too much sense. There's too much common sense involved. But of course, the radical left, they are having a meltdown over this. Mr. DeSantis becomes the eighth governor in the last year to sign such legislation on scholastic sports despite opposition from the American Civil Liberties Union and LGBTQ groups which have decried the laws as discriminatory. The ACLU already has sued Idaho, which became the first state to pass such a law last year, in West Virginia, where Republican Governor Jim Justice signed into law a bill scheduled to go into effect July 8th unless blocked by a court. American Principles Project President Terry Schilling, who attended the bill signing, said Mr. DeSantis has solidified his reputation as a fearless conservative who will face down attacks from the woke elite in order to do what's right for his constituents. What is with these groups? They claim to be fighting discrimination, but use discrimination as a weapon. They discriminate against real, actual women and girls, and they say they are supposed to be advocates for women and girls. It makes absolutely no sense. And as I pointed out on a previous show, the former Bruce Jenner, who goes by Caitlyn, but is still a guy, he has come out against this. He's one of the most famous transgenders there are, an actual Olympic athlete, 
he recently posted this, an example of one of these typical races. Kyle Gabinelli. So is that fair? Is that even competition? Of course not. There are differences between men and women. There are differences between boys and girls. Everyone knows that. That's why we have sports separated by gender. And fortunately, we have people like Florida Governor Ron DeSantis who are taking a stand and not just speaking out, but doing something about it. So next, we're gonna talk about crash test dummies. We are going to go in a completely opposite direction from the last segment, and why? We can do that because we're talking about Democrats. They have no problem at all going in completely opposite directions, being completely contradictory. And that's what we're doing right here. We're going to talk about Democrat Representative Eleanor Holmes Norton. She wants gender equity and crash test dummies. She says right now, all the crash test dummies represent men. And we need to have some that represent women. And why? Because there are differences between men and women, according to her, according to this situation. And here's the story. Women have achieved equality on the road when it comes to driving, but when it comes to safety testing to keep them safe on the road, they are nowhere near achieving equality, Norton said in a statement. Crash test standards are incredibly antiquated, and we must update these standards now, especially as more people return to their daily commute in the next few months. Norton, who chairs the subcommittee on highways and transit, noted the federal government uses crash test dummies based on male bodies and car companies are not required to use female models. So here's a question, why? Why do you need male and female crash test dummies? Why can't you just use male ones? Why do you have to have both? Well, Norton gives us the answers. More important than the differences in average height between males and females, there are also biological differences in anatomy, such as average neck strength and posture that affect how female and male bodies react in a crash, Norton's office said in a statement. Females are not just smaller versions of males, co-scientific director of the Center for Injury Research and Prevention at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, Christy Arbogast said, according to Consumer Reports. They're put together differently. Their material properties, their structure is different. Females are just different. What an interesting concept. But here's the thing. The left go on and on and say there are no differences between boys and girls when they're trying to advocate for this transgender in sports. They say there are no physiological differences. All you have to do is look at race results to know that that's not true, but they will push it. And here's the thing, folks. Here's why these two stories are so entertaining to me, because the Democrats will push common sense when it suits their needs, and then they'll flip right around and push something that's nonsensical if that suits their needs. They go on and on. I'm all for female crash test dummies. Why? Because men and women are different. I'm also for boys not competing in girls' sports. Why? Because boys and girls are different. How's that for some common sense? How's that for just thinking through the issue? It's not what the Democrats do. They push an agenda, and what we really need is some common sense. Folks, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. But remember, if you're new to the show or haven't subscribed yet, regardless of platform, just search on my name, hit that subscribe button, make sure notifications are turned on. That way you can follow the show and help us grow. Thanks again for tuning in. Our next show will be Friday at the same time. Until then, I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. And here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-Minute News Hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.